I know I hit a lot on HTML, but honestly, I have to say, it's an incredible markup language to get accustomed to programming. Even though it doesn't follow many standards, like a semicolon at the end, it's still a good intro that teaches you about proper syntax and logic. If you don't know how HTML works, then why are you here? But to put it simply, if we think of a web page like a human being, HTML would be the skeleton that holds everything together. Then JavaScript would be the organs that make the body work. And then CSS would be like the hair and eye color and the clothes that it's wearing. And elements are HTML's way of telling it what to do. So for example, I want a header here, I'd put an H1 or an H2 for a subheading. If I wanted a paragraph here, I'd put a P element. If I wanted to combine all of these together, I'd wrap them in a div element and so on and so forth. And so we can see here that there's more specific tags than just text. The div tag, for example, creates a sort of box and other tags such as strong and em not only alter the look of the text, but also tells the website that they mean something. It should be emphasized or have bigger importance than the rest of the text. However, there's some niche tags that not many people know. Which ones are they? Well, let's find out. First up is the ABBR tag, or also called the abbreviation tag. I use this one a lot personally, and it's used for when you want to display the meaning of an acronym or an abbreviation. Use it, simply wrap the word or acronym in the ABBR tag, then add a title attribute to the tag. Note that the title attribute actually works with every element. And then in that title attribute, type what the acronym or abbreviation stands for. Now, when you hover your cursor over that abbreviation, it shows you the title that you set. And I recommend to put this on buttons or icons for further accessibility. Careful with mobile users though, as they are unable to hover over objects. The code tag. This is extremely useful for transmitting code blocks to users. Yeah, you could use CSS and a normal P element to make it look like a code block, but why would you do that when the code tag is literally there for this exact use case? To use it, you simply wrap the snippet you want to transform with the code tag and the browser will automatically display it in a monospace font. Then you can go ahead and use CSS to make it prettier. Similar to the code tag, we have the KBD tag, also known as the keyboard tag. Much like the code tag, to use it, you simply wrap the designated keyboard keys in the KBD tag. And as you can see, the browser will automatically display them in a monospace font. Then you can simply just use CSS to make it look like a keyboard button. Next up, we have the data list plus option tag. This is super useful for displaying recommendations or an option menu, and it's actually easier than you think. First of all, create an input element with the input tag where users can write. Add the list attribute to it and give it a name. Then just create your data list with the data list tag. This is where you'll put the options or recommendations that your user can look for. Add the ID attribute to your data list and set it equal to the name you put on the list attribute. So in this case, colors. Now, inside the data list tag, you're going to add the option tags. Now, these are the individual recommendations we're going to put. For these of these option tags, add a value attribute and then name them. Whatever you put inside the value attribute will be the various options that will show up. Now, just start typing and options will pop up depending on the letters you type. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> the dialog tag. Now, this is such a quick and easy way to create a pop-up or modal on the fly. Simply create your dialog box with the dialog tag and then put your content inside of it. Now, whenever you add the open attribute, the dialog box will show and you can use super simple JavaScript to create an easy pop-up. This is super convenient for making easy mockups or just to have a general idea of how a certain context menu would look like. The details and summary tag. I am shocked at how many people don't know this tag because I think it's one of the most useful tags there is. This is super useful for creating native drop-down menus with no CSS or JavaScript. It is especially helpful for FAQ sections on a website or to hide and show an answer or explanation. Now, this one can be a little tricky to understand, so just bear with me here. Create a details element with the details tag, and you'll see that a text titled details will appear along with a little arrow next to it on the left. Next, add the summary tag inside your details tag. This will be the title you give your element, or rather the words that are not hidden. Now, you're able to add any content you want inside the details tag and you'll see that if you click the little arrow, the content will appear and disappear, all without JavaScript or CSS. I mean... <laughs> Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite tags on the list, but we have a few more which may take the cake. The time tag. This tag does basically nothing that we can see at least. This tag allows the browser to read time as an actual value. It helps search engines a bit and may make your website a little more SEO friendly, which is a good habit to start very early on. To use it, you simply wrap your time in the time tag and you're done. 
the Ruby and RT tags and RP. Very weird name, but it comes from Ruby notation. It displays a little small text on top of a word or character for additional information. Now, these tags are mainly used for Asian typographies, but you can get pretty creative with it. To use it, you simply wrap your main text with the Ruby tag. And to get the little text on top, you simply add an RT tag after your main text. And make sure to add the RP tags for browsers that don't support Ruby notation. But as I said, you can get pretty creative with this. But it's such a simple way to add text on top of other text with absolutely no CSS Required. The progress tag. Now this is such an easy and cute way to add a progress bar or completion bar without any CSS whatsoever. First of all, you're going to create your progress bar by using the progress tag. Add the max attribute to it and set it to whatever you want the maximum value to be. So in this case, we'll put 100. Now add the value attribute and set it to whatever value you want. And as you can see, the progress bar will automatically adjust to whatever value you put. It's that easy and it's seriously super cool. But there may be an even cooler tag similar to progress and that is the meter tag. It's very similar to the progress tag, but is used more for representing a scale of sorts, like how good I did on a test. You can set ranges where it automatically changes color depending on the value with low, mid, and high. And this is genuinely so sick. To create the meter bar, just simply use the meter tag, add the min and max attributes to set a range of values. So I'll put my min at zero and our max is 100. Now, if you add the value attribute and input your value, you see that much like the progress tag, it automatically adjusts the bar. But with meter, we can add ranges and even color to it by adding the low, high, and optimum attributes. You can see these as our low, mid, and high thresholds. Now, when we change our value, depending on our thresholds, the meter bar will color itself. The color changes on where it falls on the threshold. I mean, how cool is that? And lastly, we have the field set and legend tags. This is a very easy and quick way to create a cool box to group objects together. To create the field set element, we'll just use the field set tag and we'll add everything we want inside the box inside of it. Now we can add a title to this box by simply using the legend tag inside the the field set tag and writing whatever text we want as our title and it will automatically put it in the margins of the box if you learned something new today please let me know by absolutely destroying that like button if you enjoy this type of content then consider subscribing i post videos on programming web development and taking you through my journey of learning how to code that's all for today's video thank you so much for staying with me and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye <laughs>